Hello, I hope you enjoyed that very peaceful, relaxing, and deeply spiritual song by our friend Cecilia about how the Lord works with our heart to give us a cleansing, to bring us back into his peace, and most of all, to the knowledge of his great love for us. And that really is the answer to a lot of the stress that comes up in our lives. If we can just rest our hearts in the love that our Heavenly Father has done, has for us, and the saving work that our Lord Jesus Christ has done for us, and then also the power of the Holy Spirit who walks with us to help us with one situation after another. I'd like to read you from the book I was quoting earlier, In His Own Image by Art Mathias, what he calls a Christian definition of stress. What creates an alarm reaction in our bodies is what Art is asking. And he says, here are a few possibilities. Unforgiveness, resentment, retaliation, anger, hatred, violence, guilt and shame, sorrow and regret, loneliness, fears, grief, performance drivenness, oh, it's a much longer list than I thought, self-hatred, being rejected, being rejecting of others, fear of rejection, jealousy and envy, covetousness, gossip, slander. And he asked the question, can you think of other negative emotions or actions, and what do they have in common? He says these negative emotions are stress, but in Christian terms, they're also called sins. Mm -hmm. And they're sins precisely because they're a temptation to carry us away from the peace that the Lord gives us. It's a peace that's based on, really, on two things. It's, it's based on trust in the Lord and then a willingness to do what he wants us to do. And the primary thing where our hearts is concerned right. is wrapped around the issue of forgiveness. Are we able to receive forgiveness where we need it? And are we able to forgive to give forgiveness to the people who have wronged and hurt us? If, if we can't, we're going to begin filling up with stress over the many things that go wrong in our lives. So we have to come back to trust. That's the power right. of believing, to working on our faith, and to be watchful over what it is that carries us away from, from that place of peace. Now, I don't imagine, Angela, there's anybody that goes to church that no. wants to walk out of church and lose the peace of Christ. But a friend of mine said we should pray for the parking lot because <laughs> rather than the church, because people are getting the peace in the church, but they're losing it in the parking well, lot. Well, we should actually pray for the parking lot before, before and after. And after, <laughs> pray, for, pray for the home, pray yes. for the way home, pray for the way, way to the lunch. I mean, every part of our Christian life needs yes. to be prayed for to, be live, to live into the peace that God actually has for us because there's a thief out there who is a peace robber. Jesus yes. said there's a That's thief. Right. It's a tempter. He's coming to take away. Uh, let me read to you what James uh, has, says in uh, his first book, 13 through 16. It says, Let no one say when he is tempted, I am being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Okay, now that's, okay. that's a wonderful passage. We're going to break it down in a moment. There are actually seven steps in there. And those of you who are at home, if you didn't catch the citation, open your Bibles to James 1, verse 13 to 16. It's what mm -hmm. Angela was just reading. We call it the pathway to temptation because there are seven steps there that, that without even noticing it, we could be drawn right, right into as quick as a snap, as quick as the blink of an eye or maybe over a process of slow resistance finally succumb to having our heart captured away from the peace of Christ and into whatever that negative emotion right. represents. Now, for me, it was important to understand that temptation was not the sin. Temptation I didn't not. sin by being tempted, and I think that's very important to say. And we see that in the life mm -hmm. of Jesus, where that's it right. says that he was tempted in every way as we are, but he did not sin. So let's take a look at the first step here. It says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. But each one is tempted speaks of what's going on with temptation. Is that coming right. from inside of us or outside of us? Um, and, and folks, the biblical picture is, is that there is a tempter, the evil one in his dark kingdom. There's more than just mundane, everyday life going on. There's, there's a there are um, powers and principalities that surround mm -hmm. us that are actually have an interest in drawing us away from, from peace and trust and forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And so when situations happen, we're presented with a temptation to go into fear or to get stressed up with anxiety or worry and, and depart from the peace of Christ. I, 
I mentioned it in an earlier show, but Jesus mm -hmm. said he has a peace that he gives us, not as the world gives. Okay. And I think it's worth refreshing us in that because it's a peace that is based on who he is and what he can do, not who we are and what we do without him. We know what we do without him. We stumble and fall and we yes, have every sir. right to yep. be anxious about yep. our lives when we look at what we have to face. But if we look him in the face, mm -hmm. then we draw a peace from trusting him to be with us, to show us a way through it, indeed to make a way through the things that lie around us. Mm -hmm. And so temptation is coming from the one the Bible calls the tempter. And Jesus experienced that. Yes, he did. There in the garden, um, well, first in the wilderness, and mm -hmm. then later in the garden, we mm -hmm. see a graphic demonstration of how forceful the temptation of the enemy was upon Jesus. And how did Jesus meet the temptation? <laughs> so, you know, this is a pass in the end zone. <laughs> how did he meet the temptation? With what did he use? He cried out to the Lord. He cried out to the Lord and he used the words of yes, Scripture. Yes, he did. The words of Scripture to stand in what the truth is. Mm -hmm. when, when, let's say, um, the kingdom that, of darkness is checking us out with a situation, they're going to tempt us with anxiety or fear, and yet the Word of God says that God's not given us a spirit no. of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so the answer to temptation is to go back to the Word right. and go back to the truth the Word represents to remember our word, to hold, mm -hmm. hang in tight with Jesus. But that's not the thought that the negative emotion is bringing you. Fear mm -hmm. is beating a drum that says, be afraid, be very afraid, get stressed right, up, right. right away. Anybody else in the world would. So that temptation, you'll say, starts with a thought or an idea first. And that's how it comes into you. And that's, that's how it comes that's into right. you. And it's, and it's not our fault, so to speak, that the thought comes mm -hmm. to us. But what we do with that's it right. becomes our issue. And the second step, we've already started walking into the exposition of that a bit. It says, but each one is tempted when he is drawn away and by his own desires and enticed. And as a young Christian, I just he's tempted when he's drawn away by his own desires. And the part I focused on was the wrong desires. And I just spent a lot of time there struggling with wrong desires and trying to get a victory over them without realizing the in-between thing. Did you notice it in the text, folks? Each one is tempted when he's drawn away. Well, what are we drawn away from? The peace of Christ. The peace of That's Christ. That's exactly right. We're, we're drawn away from the place where we had been trusting the Lord up mm -hmm. until that moment. We're drawn away from the place where we had been, what the Bible calls, abiding in Him. Mm -hmm. Where we've been maybe experiencing the peace that passes all understanding, or maybe where our heart was just coated with so much forgiveness, we were letting things go. But now something's happened, it's reminded us, and all of a sudden, we're back on the warpath again. That's right. And, and so we've been drawn away often without even realizing it. I know, for myself, I was tempted again and again as a young Christian to just go into the stress response because it was so deeply ingrained in me, mm -hmm. and I didn't even realize I'd lost peace. It happened to me this week uh, for about a day and a half. I felt being drawn away. Instead of falling into something, I felt like I was being drawn away from the peace of Christ, and I felt this darkness come over and was getting upset and crying, and I had to stand back and go, where am I being pulled into? Where am I being pulled away from? And I realized that I was not leaning on that peace of Christ and going to Him. And, and once I did that, it was this cloud had lifted, and it was wonderful. The no. tears stopped. Bruce was happy again. <laughs> <laughs> well, he Bruce, wasn't getting, he wasn't getting affected by that. Yes. <laughs> yes. And, and just as, as we all are, yes. enjoying a greater mm -hmm. peace and a freedom coming yep. to us. I know, like, like you, I've got a testimony, too, of how even as a Christian, for many years yes. I lived with so little real peace and enjoyment of life. Because I had, right. I had too many issues, I was hauling along in my backpack. Backpack. Yeah, Scuffle. just burdened down by that. So, so there's a, a place for recognizing when we lose the peace of Christ. And that's, that's why it's great. One reason why it's great to come into church and experience the fellowship and the worship and the Bible teaching is you are centered back into the mm -hmm. peace of Christ. And as often as we can get there, then we also need to keep watch. That's right. One of Jesus' top five commands was keep watch. Stay alert. Be watchful. Why? Because the thief is coming to try to rob that peace away from you. And he's going to get it if we're not alert to the way this process works. So we, um, we have a school that helps people mm -hmm. deal with the loss of peace issues. Could you explain a little bit to the people what goes on in the week? Healing Strings. It's a wonderful time where we come together and we learn and we gain an understanding of those things which we thought were just a part of who we were, those emotions, whether we're living in anger or stress or unforgiveness or bitterness, and we can't seem to get past those. Through the Word, we're given a pathway of release in order to 
find that there is hope that I don't have to live like this for the rest of my life. We come together in prayer and worship, um, learning wonderful uh, teachings that will give us freedom in a wonderful, safe, and confidential environment that's just, it saved my life uh, October of 2004, and I, I just, I cannot begin to say enough of the freedom that you get through these teachings. They're wonderful. And we have it available mm -hmm. by day and by night. That's right. By day, it's Monday through Friday, from 8.30 in the morning till 5 at mm -hmm. night, um, and, and, it's, and the time passes so quickly. It's, it's such a refreshing time. Fellowship develops in the course of the week, but we recognize not everybody can take off from their right. day job. Although some people do, some people yes. kind of have come from as far away as Washington State, and let's say we had somebody from Pittsburgh not too long ago. In fact, up in North Augusta last week, we had a fellow flying from England. That's right. He wants and us was, to come to England. I was in so much. I was so concerned about that. I didn't get stressed, but I was just concerned. <laughs> I said, "Lord, you got to meet him with something." And I, finally, I got up my nerve. I said, "Was well, it worth the ticket?" He said, "Oh yes, it was," because he'd been impacted right. so well by what was going on. But we also have it by night, and that's a Saturday, a Sunday afternoon every night of the week, mm -hmm. and then the following Saturday, so that it bridges over a working week and gives right. people an opportunity to come in, learn what to do with negative emotions in the present, but also what to do with the things in the backpack, the negative emotions we carry along with us. And in another broadcast, we'll be talking about what those strongholds are, mm -hmm. how they get formed, and how to get free of them. I want to leave you with one quick word, and that's the word recognition. I think out of everything that I've gotten, I've been able to recognize that which has held me captive in yes. that backpack. That's what you really need to understand. Recognize first is the key. Recognize both when we lose the peace mm -hmm. and recognize That's what exactly we're right. losing the peace to. That's right. All right. Well, God bless you folks. Yes. I hope you're learning and gleaning things that will help you gain more peace and freedom as you deal with matters of the heart. <laughs>